Hi everybody, my name is Chris Ward and I'm one of the product managers for the control product business and in this example I intend to take you through some of the tips and tricks in TIA portal which will hopefully make your jobs a bit easier um, especially if you're new to the TIA platform um, and the first thing that I wanted to show to you is when you go into the TIA homepage is the um, welcome tour. So if you click on welcome tour here, it'll open you up to a link in the web browser. And as you can see here, there's a host of different options. So it gives you an overview of TIA portal, Somatic S7 architecture, library concepts and visualization. So if we click on overview of the TIA portal, it provides you with a video, a load of quick links and a host of information on TIA portal and if we scoot over as you can see we've got now Simatic S7 architecture quick links product pages user manuals application examples of how to guide you through how to use the tools we can go into library concept again it's a similar kind of format so there's a lot of information in this platform in the tutorial center which will hopefully make your life a little bit easier um, in terms of learning how to get to grips with the platform and how to use the various different functions which are integrated into TIA. So the next thing that I'd like to point out to you is if you've actually got a Simmer code set up. So what we'll do now is we'll go into create a new project and we'll go into Simmer code and give it a title and create that and once that's finished loading what i want to point out to you in this part of the example is some of the application wizards so the idea is that if you're using the application wizards it takes you through to all the critical information uh, which you'll need to complete a simmer code station so there's no need to trawl through the information which is integrated into the project view to um, establish a configuration. So if we go into configure device, add a new device, drives and starters, detecting and monitoring. As you can see here, we've got Simmer code, Simmer code Pro, Simmer code Basic, and there we go. We'll just select the Simmer code Profinet select that device and as you can see at the bottom here you have start device wizard which has already been selected um, and once you've done that you can click add so that will then take you through to the start device wizard and it'll prompt you for any of the critical questions uh, which will be needed to um, create your simmer code station so what type of application you have whether it's standard or safety so we'll say it's a direct starter. And then there's another start parameter wizard here, which is unticked. So if you really wanted to drill down into it further, you can also click this parameter wizard and click on finish. Once that's finished loading, it'll then prompt you for four critical pieces of information. You've got the field bus interface, the configuration, the motor protection and the machine monitoring. So here, this is all about how to parameterize the uh, Profi net communications. Then the configuration, do we want thermistor protection? We've already selected it's a direct online starter. Once we're happy with that, we can move on to the next feature. Motor protection, what's the current setting of the motor? What's the overload setting? What do we want the cooling down period to be? say that's 200 do we want unbalanced protection um, do we want and how do we want it to react to that so we could say at 60% we might want it to um, get send a warning to an engineer or we even might want it to trip for this we'll keep it as warm and then we've got like these stalled rotor protection so what level do we want it to trip out or how do we want it to react to a stalled rotor say for example if a conveyor belt um, was um, jammed 
you may want to trigger a trip at a certain level to so say if you got up to 800% we might want that to to trip out so that there's no further damage caused to the motor and then in Themista we have another option here how do we want it to react do we want it to trip do we want it to warn or do we want it to signal to, to the trip level and response to a sensor fault normally under those conditions we probably want it to warn so once you've finished motor protection you can then go on to machine monitoring machine monitoring isn't really critical information but it does help um, gain a, a higher understanding and flag um, when a motor is acting untoward because it allows you to um, look at things like current limitation function so if you've got a slight current rise you can decide how the device reacts to that similarly with the low current with the operating hours as well you've got similar conditions you decide how the motor reacts to a spe specific amount of hours and how long it's been operating for how many times it can start per hour and you've also got this integrated ground fault protection which is integrated into the ctvt module uh, once you've finished filling in those characteristics you can then go on to finish so once you've filled in the parameter wizards and then you go into parameters you take a look at parameters and you can see here you've got profit at parameters you've got configuration and you've got motor protection so in the parameter wizards it's already prompted you for all this information so there's no need to fill in these boxes the only ones that you actually have to focus on now is how to establish the motor control and also your outputs um, if you've got a basic configuration now another great tip that I have for you is that if ever you're struggling to understand what a function does all you have to do is say if you went into machine monitoring we have a little look at current limits and we hover over it as you can see it comes up with an automatic description of what that function actually does um, and also the limitations of that function so if ever you're stuck with um, a particular function please use um, just to hover over the function and then it'll pop down with a drop down of an explanation of the function and you can even drill down into that further when we go into trip level and then we go to current limits it'll take you through to the function block and explain exactly how that works um, so I hope you found those tips useful um, and I hope you found the video useful thanks very much for watching and please stay tuned for more thank you